since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and the morning I shall never see again. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, uh, Elsa. And, you know, uh, when we study about the sins of Babylon, so we have to study about how the Babylon was fallen. But before that, we are studying, I mean, why, why God caused the, uh, the destruction on Babylon. So let us think about the sins of Babylon. What, what were the sins of Babylon from Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 to 3, and also verse 7. You know, mainly there are four sins of Babylon mentioned in this chapter. The first one is the idolatry. <clears throat> the first one is the idolatry. That means uh, it is written in chapter 18, verse 3, that for all the nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her immorality. So the first sin was the idolatry. And the second sin was the false alliance. The false alliance means, you know, it's it's same in, in the same verse it is written, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with uh, amen her or with babylon and the third sin was worship of pleasures and luxury worship of pleasures and luxury was third sin that means it is written in verse 3 itself that the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury okay and the fourth pride of babylon was the pride the pride means it is written in verse 7 verse 7 it is written that she glorified herself and lived senselessly and sitting as a queen and saying nothing will happen to her. Okay, So these are the main uh, four sins of Babylon. That means the last one is pride. That means she was, she was sitting uh, as, as a queen and uh, saying that uh, nothing is going to happen to me. Okay, And she was glorifying herself <coughs> and uh, living in a <coughs> luxurious uh, leading a luxurious life. Okay, so now let us think about the the, the destruction of uh, uh, economic and political uh, Babylon. So we know that we have seen how uh, the 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 city or the country of Babylon is going to be destroyed or fall uh, in in religious uh, I mean realm. Okay, and the religious destruction is explained in chapter seventeen, but here in chapter eighteen. Uh, we understand that the economic and political Babylon's uh, uh, destruction or fall is uh, recorded. Okay, so we are going to look into that point. I think this is uh, maybe, you know, this is going to be the last class of Revelation uh, Bible study of this year, okay, 2021, because uh, uh, the upcoming two Fridays will be uh, will be a busy with uh, we'll be busy with the mini uh, Christmas carols and outreach programs and fasting prayer and the uh, year ending meeting extra. Okay, so with chapter 18, we will conclude uh, the studies about the great tribulation period. Okay, and that's going to be uh, to, to be a concluder. You know, we will conclude uh, uh, the, uh, the things about the great tribulation by chapter 18. So that's the end of that. And uh, the, the events which uh, take place on the earth during the time of the Great Tribulation. But we have many more interesting things to study from chapters 19 through 22. Okay, the very important chapters are 19 to 22 because there are many things which is uh, written and which gives us happiness and which gives us joy that uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, the final judgment is coming, the new heaven and new earth is coming and New Jerusalem, and eternity, and so on. Okay, there are many things which we have to discuss from chapters 19 to 22. But now, today, we are trying to conclude our study of uh, this year uh, by chapter 18. So, in chapter 17, we already studied about the specialities and uh, the religious de uh, destruction of Babylon. Okay, The religious destruction of Babylon. But in chapter 18, we are going to study about the economic and political destruction of Babylon. And also in chapter 17, uh, Babylon is pictured as a great harlot or is, a, is, is, is pictured as a great prostitute. Okay. Uh, the reason of that is different. You know, when uh, the, the, the Babylon and the people of Babylon, the leadership of Babylon, uh, the political and religious leadership of Babylon were influencing uh, other people and other countries to, to be a part of uh, uh, their prostitution or, uh, you know, 
when you think about religiously they were trying to make an alliance with other countries and other people other religions and uh, uh, are trying to defeat those people okay but in chapter 18 babylon is pictured as a city of immorality and a dwelling place of demons so we, when we go through that portion we will understand in chapter 18 babylon is pictured as a city of immorality and a dwelling place of demons okay we know that babylon was not only an ancient city and a powerful empire but also a symbol of mankind's rebellion against god okay so when we study about the history of the uh, babylon uh, all of a sudden we understand that uh, um, you know uh, the babylon is is a, is a great i mean uh, ancient city or we think that okay, a babylon is the is the powerful empire you know but in bible we understand from, from when we study the bible we understand that it is also a symbol of mankind's build, I mean, rebellion against God. Okay, this we already studied in the previous class that uh, you know Nimrod. Uh, Nimrod was the founder of Babylon city, uh, and uh, as we read in Genesis chapter eleven, that the people were rebelling against God, and they were building a tower for themselves. Uh, that that tower was known as the Tower of Babel. Okay, so history says that. The ancient Babylon is not existing now. The ancient Babylon is not existing now. It was totally destroyed. It was totally destroyed. Instead, there is a, there is a city now called as uh, Al Hilla. So Al Hilla is a city now. It is called as there, and uh, where there are many many Muslim people. I mean, living there now, and it is it is under Iraq now. Okay, so this is the uh, the background of uh, that uh, I mean city of Babylon. Okay, now it is under the Iraq, and also there are many uh, Muslim people are living there now, and that that particular place is known as uh, Al Hilla now. Okay, so uh, uh, but uh, we understand that uh, in order to fulfill the prophecies about the Babylon, uh, in that place itself another city will come up. Okay, we know that uh, I mean already. The city of Babylon is destroyed and uh, it is captured by Rome and uh, Iraq. So those people are, uh, I mean, controlling uh, all those people. But at the same time, you know, there are many prophecies which is written in Bible, especially uh, in the in the prophetical books. Okay, so so that those prophecies must be fulfilled in time. So in order to fulfill the prophecies about the Babylon in that place, the same place another city will come up and that city will be destroyed again totally as it is prophesied by the prophets especially jeremiah chapter uh, jeremiah chapter 51 verse 26 can you read uh, can you read that verse jeremiah chapter 51 verse 26 no stone shall be taken from you for a corner and no stone for a foundation but you shall be perpetual waste declares the lord Okay, so that is the particular um, prophecy uh, of Jeremiah, prophecy to the Babylon, okay, the, the city of Babylon. So that is going to happen again uh, during the time of the Great Tribulation, we believe. Okay, but as we are the children of God, what is going to happen to Babylon is not at all important. Rather, how much the system of the Babylon is influencing the Christian church today is important. Okay, so even in the last class also I told you that you know Babylon is not important for us. Okay, or I mean, who is ruling over the Babylon, or the Babylon is still existing or not? It is not at all a problem for a child of God. But the problem is the matter is you know the system of Babylon, how the system of Babylon is trying to influence the Christian church today. Okay, that is the important thing for every one of us. Okay, so the important things. To notice here is that the Babylonian system is always influencing the people all over the world. And there is a Babylonian system. We already studied about that. And the Babylonian system is always influencing the people all over the world. Even today, you know, it, it happens. It happens today. You know, all over the world, this Babylonian system is influencing many people, many religions, and many uh, cultural people. So and during the time of great tribulation, it will increase. Now it is happening. The same thing is happening. And during the uh, great tribulation period, it is going to it is going to increase. 
and uh, more powerfully will influence the world. And it is written here that all nations and kings of the world will make alliance with this system and idolatry and immorality and worship of pleasure and luxury. I mean, so when you read uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 4, Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, there is an important message and warning to the people of God. Chapter 18, verse 4. Yes. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. Okay. So listen, even though many things are going to happen uh, for the city of Babylon, and many things are going to happen for the Rome, and many things are still happening today, there is a special message for the people of God here in verse 4. It says that, come out of her mouth. That means come out of her. That means come out from Babylon. That means come out from the system of the Babylon and the worship system of the Babylon and don't participate in her sins. Don't participate in her sins and do not be a part of her plagues. Okay, so God is going to send the plagues upon the city of Babylon and God is going to, I mean, uh, destroy the city and God is going to uh, uh, judge the city. So that's the reason to the children of God, to the people of God. I mean, the spirit of the Lord is saying in verse four that come out of her, come out of Babylon and you don't participate in her sins and do not be a part of her plagues. Okay, so this could be a message for all of us today or the message for the New Testament church that do not enjoy with the Babylonian system. Do not enjoy the Babylonian system because it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous and the destiny of the system is horrible. We will study about that later. You know, the destiny of the system is very dangerous and it is very horrible. So that's the reason the Spirit of the Lord is saying that it is very dangerous. So don't go after the enjoyment of the Babylonian system or do not enjoy the Babylonian system. I mean, it is very dangerous. Again, you know, we know the history of people of Israel. Eh? The people of Israel, they were taken to Babylon captivity once. That is already we have, I mean, seen that. Eh? The people of Israel, they were taken to or taken as the captive, captives or exiled people into Babylon once. But they returned from Babylon to Jerusalem. Then then they decided that, okay, we are leaving all the Babylonian practices of worship and we are leaving all the pagan gods and all the pagan goddesses and uh, we are leaving all the Babylonian way of life. But again, a new sin endured among them. That was the materialism and luxurious life. This is very important to understand. We, they already left everything. The people of Israel, they already left everything in, in, in Babylon and return to Jerusalem, okay? And they decided, okay, we are going to leave all those things, all the Babylonian practices of worship and pagan gods and goddesses and Babylonian way of life and also uh, all those things which was, which was happening in Babylon. But the thing is, Satan is not leaving them. The Babylonian system is not leaving them. And the Babylonian system entered something which is specially into the people of Israel, that was the materialism, materialism and luxurious life. You know, even today, not only the people of Israel, but all over the world, the Christianity is under this materialism and the luxurious life. You know, many of the people, many of the churches are promoting this materialism. Okay, and uh, many of the churches are saying, if you if you love God and if you follow Jesus Christ, then God Jesus will bless you. And Jesus will give you more money, more money, more material blessings and more all those things of this world. Just like, you know, when Satan was uh, uh, attempting Jesus, when Satan was, was offering all over the, every, every property all over the world. And, and Satan said, okay, if you just bow down me and I will give all these things to you. You know, the same thing is happening in our churches also today, the materialism, promoting the wealth, promoting the prosperity of this world and leading the people into the luxurious life. But remember, materialism never matches with spirituality. When a person, when who, a person when he is trying to follow the materialism, 
and a person when he is trying to i mean a pro, to get prosperity in all the material things I mean, and leading a luxurious life that life will not match with the spirituality of a believer because the spirituality the bible says that when I mean, you have to be content enough whatever i mean you have with whatever you have okay so that's what we understand from the bible so of course we need to earn i mean money or everything to live in this world it's sure there is no doubt at all you have to earn you have to work hard and you have to earn all those things but never go after the material prosperity never go after the material prosperity we are allowed to enjoy the earthly blessing given by god we know that god has given many blessings upon us and god has blessed us with all the i mean blessing of this world at the same time that is given by god but give importance to the real spirituality give importance to the real spirituality that's what the lord is expecting from all of us i mean so that is the that is the conclusion of that point and we are going to the next point uh, the heading is the sudden fall of babylon the sudden fall of babylon <clears throat> and uh, that is we are going to discuss from revelation chapter 18 verses 8 10 17 and 19 okay these are the main verses which uh, we can cover uh, with this uh, heading the sudden fall of babylon revelation chapter 18 verses 8 10 17 and 19 yes elsa you can read those portions now those verses now For this reason her plagues will come in a single day death and mourning and famine and she will be burned up with fire for mighty is the lord god who has judged her verse 10 they will stand far off in fear of her torment and say alas alas you great city you mighty city babylon for in for in a single hour your judgment has come verse 17 for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste and all shipmasters and seafaring men sailors and all whose trade is on the sea stood far off and finally verse 19 and they drew and they drew and they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned crying mm-hmm. out alas alas for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth for in a single hour she has been laid waste okay thank you elsa you know when elsa is reading the verses and uh, it's good that you're writing down all those points at the same time you have to open your bible and look into the bible whatever it is which is written in that in that verses okay so then only you will understand what i'm explaining because uh, the all the things which i'm explaining is not written in the slide okay you you will be getting only the points okay so uh, if you want to understand very clearly and you have to look into the bible also okay listen in these particular verses the sudden destruction of babylon is predicted in a different way the sudden destruct, destruction of babylon is predicted in a different way no there is a use, usage it is uh, it, it, there is a phrase written in 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 every verses it is like uh, you know you see uh, the in in one day plagues will come okay in one day plagues will come in one hour judgment will come in one hour the great wealth laid waste and in one hour she has been laid waste these are the usages that we can see these are the phrases that uh, i mean which is used in this particular uh, 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 references okay in one hour in one day these are the things okay which means the destruction of babylon and babylonian system will happen suddenly okay so the sudden fall of babylon or the sudden destruction is going to happen uh, for the babylon so that is what we understand from this that means the same destruction had happened to babylon once okay in the history we know that when it was happening you know the same destruction same destruction had happened to babylon once which that is that is mentioned in uh, book of daniel okay that is mentioned in the book of daniel uh, chapter chapter 7 in chapter 7 uh, sorry so chapter 5 yeah daniel uh, book of daniel chapter 5 now there are many verses i will just uh, i mean explain those points maybe 
if we need uh, we will uh, read some of the verses only okay so in daniel chapter 5 where maybe verses 20 22 23 25 to 28 and 30 okay we know the history uh, of uh, what is what is happening there in in babylon you know nebuchadnezzar was the king of babylon in bc 605 to 539 Okay. So Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon in this period, okay, BC 605 to BC 539. So then his son Belshazzar became the king of Babylon. Okay. After Nebuchadnezzar's death, Belshazzar became the king of Babylon. And it was in his time the kingdom was divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Okay. It was in his time, Belshazzar's time, that the kingdom of Babylon was divided into two and it was given to the Medes and Persians. Okay, that is very clearly written in this chapter in Daniel chapter 5. Okay, so during this time, the sudden destruction happened on Babylon. During the time of Belshazzar the king, the sudden destruction happened on Babylon. In, in Daniel chapter 5, we read that Belshazzar, the son uh, of Nebuchadnezzar saw so an inscription or a or a what is that a handwriting on the wall but he could not read that inscription okay we know that hmm? he was just watching a uh, watching a handwriting or inscription on the wall and uh, 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 Belshazzar was not, was not able to read or interpret I mean what it is written on the wall okay then he was calling the witchcraft people and the wise men of Babylon. Okay, it is very clearly written in chapter chapter five. So he called all the witchcraft people and also the wise men of Babylon to read this, I mean, inscription and to interpret the writing. Even they came and they were not able to do that. They were not not able to read that. They were not able to interpret that. Then the king came to know that there is a Hebrew man. His name is Daniel. And he is an exiled man from Judah. You know, the king told him that you have to read this one and you have to interpret this inscription on the wall. In uh, chapter 5, verse 25, chapter 5, verse 25 of Daniel, it is written that he was reading that writing, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufersin. Okay, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufersin was written on the, on the, on the inscription of the wall. And the meaning was, God has numbered your kingdom. God has numbered your kingdom and put an end on it. And you have been weighed on the scale and found deficient. Your kingdom has been divided and given over to the Medes and Persians. Okay, chapter 5, verses 25 to 28. Okay, so this was the clear interpretation which was given by Daniel. And he said that something is going to happen to the kingdom of Babylon. Something is going to happen to the kingdom of Babylon. In, in verse 30, in verse 30, it says that that same night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king was slain. That means in verse 30, it says that same night, Belshazzar, the king was killed. No? You know, what, what, was, what was the reason of the destruction of the kingdom? And what was the reason of the death of those kings? That is very clearly written in chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. No, what is that? Nebuchadnezzar, the father of Belshazzar, was proud. In verse 20, it is written, Nebuchadnezzar, this, the, the father of Belshazzar, was proud and behaved arrogantly. He was proud and behaved arrogantly so that he was thrown away from the royal throne and became like an animal. And he started to eat grass like a cattle. And that was the end of Nebuchadnezzar. Listen very carefully. When the destruction is happening. And why that happened? Why that happened? Because of the pride of Nebuchadnezzar. Because of the pride of Belshazzar. And they were proud about themselves. And they were behaving to the other people arrogantly and they were rebelling against God. Okay, They were doing everything against God. So that was the reason that Nebuchadnezzar was thrown away from the royal throne 
and he became like an animal and he started to eat the grass just like an animal and that was the end of Nebuchadnezzar when again in verses 22 and 23 uh, chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 there we read that Belshazzar his son also did not humble his heart listen Belshazzar also did not humble his heart in the presence of God, but he exalted himself against the Lord. Is that clearly written in that verses 22 and 23? He exalted himself against God. This is what is going to happen for the people, those who are exalting themselves against God, exalting themselves and the people, those who are not, not willing to humble their heart. In the presence of God, the destruction, the fall is going to happen. And that was the reason of sudden death of those kings and the destruction of the ancient Babylon. So in that way, the ancient Babylon was destroyed. You know, we know that at present, the ancient Babylon is not in existence, but the Babylonian system is prevailing all over the world. Listen very carefully. Now, at present, the ancient Babylon, Babylon is not existing. But the Babylonian system is prevailing all over the world. No, Bible very clearly reminds us that there will be a time when the literal Babylonian kingdom will come up no sooner and will see the total fall or destruction of Babylon during the time of Great Tribulation. Okay, so especially that is mentioned in I mean, Revelation chapter uh, 17 and 18. That there is a, there is a, there is a day coming that this uh, I mean literal Babylon will come up, it will come up, okay, and they will rearrange everything, okay. But at the same time, God will I mean judge them, and God will make a total destruction on the Babylon kingdom. Okay, that will happen during the time of the Great Tribulation, which is mentioned in chapters seventeen and eighteen of Book of Revelation. You know, when we study the history of this Babylonian kingdom, we understand all the major prophets, uh, major prophets means Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, all these prophets prophesied many things about Babylon, okay? Not only in the book of Revelation, but in the Old Testament also, there are many prophets prophesied about Babylon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all these four prophets are known as the major prophets of the Old Testament. They also prophesied about the Babylon. Finally, in the book of Revelation, Apostle John also mentions about many things that Babylon, uh, Babylon again will stand for Rome and the capital of the Rome Empire, the enemy of Christianity. So that is going to happen and that is already mentioned even in the Old Testament books and the prophetical books and the only uh, prophetical book of the New Testament that is the book of Revelation and we know that the city of Rome was the center for world trade okay the city of Rome was the center for world trade and government in John's day so when John Apostle John was receiving these visions from the Lord you know that time Rome was the center for the world trade all the business people were coming to, to that place and all the traders and coming there and all the business, uh, what is it, importing and ex, I mean exporting, everything was happening and Rome was the center of all those things, all the business and all the market, okay? And it was known for its luxury also, okay? And politically and economically, the people in the empire were dependent on Rome. All over the world, the people were depending on Rome or Babylon, okay, after Babylon, after Rome, okay, so they were all the people or the kings and all the uh, political leaders were trusting and depending on the city because of the wealth of that city, because of the characteristics of that city, okay, so that's what we see here, and in, in chapter 18, in 18, we see how the judgment on Babylon is going to be implemented during the time of the tribulation, okay, so there is this there is a special, um, a special uh, method that God is going to pour out his judgment upon the Babylonian city. So that is what very clearly written and we are going to study about that. The effects of the judgment on Babylon. 
that is the next slide that you're getting now that effects of the judgment on babylon the effects of the judgment on babylon that is mainly from revelation chapter 18 verses 9 to 13 revelation chapter 18 verses 9 to 13 okay we will read that portion then we will uh, move on yeah that's it and the kings of the earth who have committed sexual immorality and live in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon. For in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, articles of ivory, ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon spice, incense, myra, frank, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, chariots, and slaves, that is, human souls. Okay, now we are going to study that how the judgment of God is going to affect on Babylon and which are the areas that will be affected by this judgment, okay, from these portions. Now, in chapter 18, verses 9 and 11, you now very clearly it is written that the kings and merchants will weep and lament, okay, about the sudden judgment and fall of Babylon because there is no one to buy their costly items because of the recession. Okay, verse 9 it says that, and the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality and lived sensuously with her will weep and lament over her when they see the smoke of the burning. Again, in verse 11, it very clearly it says that the kings of the merchants, kings and the merchants from different countries, they will weep and lament about the sudden destruction and the judgment and the fall of Babylon. But the reason is very particularly written there. There is no one to buy their costly items. There are many costly items in, in, in Babylon. And there are, I mean, the, the importing and exporting is going on there. And there are many things and many, many costly items are there. But there is nobody to buy those things because of the recession. Okay. Especially in this chapter, particularly in these verses, almost 29 costly items are mentioned, okay. which, is, which, is, which is in the market. Okay. But with, uh, you know, about which the kings and the merchants and traders will weep and lament. The reason that why the other kings and the other merchants and the traders are weeping against that because they know that nothing is, nothing is going to happen. Okay, the Babylon is, I mean, fallen. The Babylon is destroyed. I mean, nothing is going to come out of Babylon now. Everything is destroyed. Everything is defeated by God and God's, I mean, fire because it is, I mean, it is against God. Okay, you, you, you read uh, maybe chapter 18, verses 11 and 12. Okay, uh, okay, you already read it, right? Okay, we will we'll move on. Okay. Chapter 18, verses 11 and 12, you can see there is a loss of business. Okay, this is the first area that uh, uh, the judgment is going to affect. Okay, the loss of business will happen. That means in various areas. First of all, the textile market. The textile market. I mean, so in verse 11, it says that when Kar uh, uh, and, and the merchants and the Athwe mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargos of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and every kind of citron wood and every article of ivory and every article made from very costly wood and bronze and iron or marble. Listen very carefully. You know, the loss of business will happen, will happen in those days. Okay. The first of all, the textile market will fall down the textile market will collapse, okay? The costly garments, they cannot sell the costly garments, okay? Because nobody has the money. And, you know, the clothing business will be closed. The clothing business will be closed, 
that is what it is very clearly written one no one will be there to to buy all those things okay buy fine linen or purple and uh, what is that um, i mean a uh, silk or scarlet okay so this is the first area that which is going to be affected and the second area is in the same verse 11 and 12 that is the second judgment will affect on the decorative materials and jewel I jewelry items the decorative materials ma materials and jewelry items okay we see that the luxury furnitures are there and the banking and the investment market will collapse the banking and investment market will collapse so that is going to happen okay during the time of the tribulation even today also this is happening I mean, thirdly thirdly you know it will affect on the costly spices and perfumes and foods okay in verse 13 it says that and cinnamon and spice and incense and perfume and frankincense and wine and olive oil and fine flour and wheat and cattle and sheep and cargoes of horses and chariots and slaves and human lives okay so in in that particular uh, i mean a verse it is very clearly written that thirdly it is going to it is going to affect on the costly spices of babylon and the perfumes of babylon and the foods of babylon okay so the food market will collapse the food market will collapse okay and fourthly in the same verse in verse 13 it is very very clearly it says that i mean this judgment will affect on livestock market the livestock market means in 13 uh, it says uh, that uh, that will uh, 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 cause uh, on cattle and sheep okay so the livestock market is there that will collapse okay and fifthly the transport market is there same verse the transport market okay the horses and chariots okay the horses and chariots are the transport market so that also will be collapsed and again sixthly and the sixth one is main point you know the the manpower market will be collapsed it is very clearly written the slaves and the human lives will be in danger slaves and human lives okay so we know that the history says that in the ancient rome one third of the population were slaves one third of the populations were slaves okay again in the modern world the, the the human bodies will be available in the market as slaves and as a slave items sales items okay so this is going to happen even today also you know in some of the places this is available the the, the bodies of the human the human bodies are available for many purpose so the human bodies will be used for many other purposes okay especially in verse 13 uh, the last the last sentence is very clearly says that the horses and the chariots and slaves and human lives that means you know the slavery will increase the slaves will come and there will be many slaves okay there will be many i mean many things will happen that uh, the people will come forward for to to buy the the human bodies okay, for for many purpose even today also i mean the the bodies of the human are i mean used for many purposes so that will happen there also but there will be a scarcity and there will be a defeat and destruction upon every areas of babylon but bible says that this market also will be collapsed and they will lose their all wealth you know the babylon the system of babylon they are proud about many things they are proud about their business. They are proud about their market. And they are proud about their luxurious items. Okay, all the costly items. But Bible says that everything will be collapsed. And everything will be, I mean, uh, given without money. And there is no money in the hands of the people. And everything is going to be collapsed. At the same time, in, uh, in our verse, verse uh, 17, read uh, verse 17 only. For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste, and all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning city. What city was like the great city? Okay, so the other countries, the people from other countries, the shipmasters, the passengers, the sailors from 
from afar that means from a dist from a far distance from, that means from other countries will cry by seeing babylon falling and destroyed and burned out so when god is sending his fire on the babylonian city and when god is causing the destruction of her babylon when what will happen the other people the other country people the shipmasters the passengers the sailors when because everywhere it is affected everywhere recession everywhere i mean the, the things are going down there is no prosperity because of the destruction because of the judgment of god okay when when the people are seeing these things they 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 will start to cry they will start to make sound because oh this babylon a great babylon it was a great babylon it was they 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 were they were i mean uh, proud uh, proud about many things but it is falling down and it is destroyed it is burned out so that's the reason all those people will be crying out of those things and they will say that, okay we don't want to go to that place because that is already fallen that is already destroyed but even though all these things are going to happen for babylon and babylonian system we believers have a great hope that we are not looking forward for a city of babylon but we are looking for a new city of jerusalem which is founded by god amen so this is what we are expecting you know let the babylonian or babylonian system let the babylon be destructed or it should be destroyed or defeated whatever happens I mean let all these things are going to happen for the babylon and the babylonian system I mean we have a hope we have a great hope that we are not at all looking forward for a city of babylon we are not running after the babylonian system system we are not running after the uh, the enjoyment of the babylonian system and their pleasures but we are looking forward for a new city of jerusalem which is founded by god hallelujah so let me remind you uh, one more thing that uh, uh, from this from the history of uh, babylon that is the, the the history says the ancient city of babylon was famous for many things the ancient city of babylon was famous for many things okay especially yeah that will be the the next slide for you what are the things that uh, uh, the city of uh, babylon was famous okay the things which was uh, famous in the babylonian city the first of all the one the first one is walls of babylon the walls of babylon was famous all over the world the walls of babylon okay and the second thing is the hanging garden of babylon the hanging gardens of babylon that means that was one of the uh, seven wonders of the ancient world so the hanging gardens of babylon was a famous thing in the ancient babylon like in the third one istar gate istar gate was one of the main famous thing in the ancient babylon that means the, that istar gate was the main entrance to the inner city of the babylon okay the main entrance to the inner city of babylon is known as the istar gate so that was a famous thing and the fourthly the famous for trade the city of babylon was famous for trade that means importing and exporting the costly items no? there were many business people coming inside and going outside and they were doing their trade and they were doing their business just i mean making the the city of babylon or city of rome as a capital city and they were uh, importing things and exporting things and are uh, they the costly items and everything okay you know but you know book of revelation says that in one day the end their economic empire will collapse only one day is enough for one one hour is enough for god to make a destruction there no says that in one day the entire economic empire will collapse and the religious empire will collapse the political empire will collapse but those who have their citizenship in heaven will rejoice at the judgment of god then right? because we uh, we will be watching all these things all these destructions destructions from above because we will be with jesus christ there we will be in heaven we will be with jesus christ you know we will see from above 
that all these things are happening in this world after the second coming of jesus christ even today also we can see many things all over the world okay we are living now and we know many things are happening all over the world but there are many things which is going to happen especially for the babylon and for the rome and for all the other countries during the time of the great tribulation but that time we won't be here we will be with jesus christ we will watch all these things all these economic empire uh, the uh, will uh, is collapsed and uh, religious empire is collapsed and political empire is collapsed and every world collapse every world destruction we will see that okay so we we we, we are going to conclude uh, i mean chapter 18 with uh, one more thing that you know uh, uh, i will i'll be concluding uh, today's class by reminding you all about what was the sin of babylon and system of babylon and how it was fallen and also how those warnings will apply to the new testament church today you know without reminding all those things i cannot uh, i mean conclude the, the class of today you know we have to know how that happened or how that is going to happen okay what was the sin of uh, i mean uh, the babylon and why god was ready to i mean destroy this babylon or the city okay we are going to see that once again one more slide you are getting now no that what is the sin of the babylon the first thing is which is written that is starting begins with the building the tower of babylon okay so that is the first one that rebellion against god and pride rebellion against god and pride we know that you no know, according to the to the artisman story that uh, uh, humans were trying to build a tower to reach to the heaven you know, when god saw this he destroyed the tower and scattered mankind across the earth and that was making them speak many languages so they could no longer understand each other so the first thing the first i mean sin of babylon was the rebellion against god they were rebellious against god and they were having the pride in their heart and they thought that we can do something with our health we can do something with our wealth but god was saying no no you can't do anything even though you are making a, a, a huge tower even though you are building a huge tower nothing is going to happen you cannot use that because i am going to send a destruction upon you and you will be scattered into different different parts of the earth men so that was the first sin that of babylon and the second one is mentioned there worshiping pagan gods and goddesses worshiping pagan gods and goddesses and thirdly influencing the whole world to worship the idols okay worshiping idols okay and fourthly sexual immorality and fifthly persecuting the christians and lastly the alliance with political and political leaders alliance with politics and political leaders men right? you know think about today's church today's so called christian churches many of the so called christian churches are corrupted corrupted with the wealth of this world corrupted with the politics of this world corrupted with the religious system of this world they worship many other things you know so called christian churches many of the people they are worshiping many other things instead of the almighty god when they are influencing many people to worship idols they are making alliance with the worldly pleasures hallelujah even in the midst of all these problems let us be away from all these things and let us serve the lord i mean faithfully in this world hallelujah you know remember one thing the church which gives more importance to the other prominent individuals individuals than god okay it will be destroyed you know many are giving many churches many nominal churches are giving importance for uh, uh, the other people that i like you know mother mary or saints or uh, their images or uh, some of the religious rituals and uh, a, a kind of babylonian system of worship I men think about all those things the churches the the, the mainland churches the mainland i mean uh, churches and uh, so called christian churches they are giving more importance for some of the prominent individuals 
okay mother mary or saints or the images of the saints or uh, i mean images of jesus or uh, some of the religious rituals are happening there you know all these things are happening because of the babylonian system of worship men remember surely they are going to fall suddenly there is no doubt at all that system is going to be fallen down men but let us pray like that in the presence of god that oh lord help us to give more importance to almighty god and his son jesus christ and the holy spirit than all other things of this world and systems of this world hallelujah we know that the world is full of world system the world is full of systems of the babylon you know there are many people i mean continuously doing sin there are many people enjoying the worldly pleasures there are many people worshiping instead of worshiping many other things instead of god instead of god okay they we are supposed to worship the living god almighty god but the people are worshiping and lifting many other people bringing many other people instead of god and they are worshiping all those things and all those persons but let us pray oh lord fill us with your holy spirit and help us to lead a spiritual life and let our worship services be led by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah this is my prayer and let us pray together in the presence of god oh lord we need the power of the holy spirit to differentiate the worldly pleasures the worldly things and the divine things hallelujah let us help us to and, and pray let us lord i mean help us to understand what is the difference between the world and the word of god I mean help us to give more importance for the word of god help us to help us to i mean give more importance for the lord the almighty god his son jesus christ and the holy spirit hallelujah you know as i i take as i take the i mean classes of book of revelation these days my dear dear brothers and sisters hallelujah you know i am so much concerned about our children and our youngsters think about our children parents think about your children parents think about your youngsters I mean, I'm so much concerned about our children and youngsters that many of them did not have any idea. They did not have any understanding about the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their personal life. Hallelujah! So this this evening, you know, as we are concluding this class today, I mean, this this could be the last class of this year of the Book of Revelation. I mean, we have many other programs in the in the upcoming two weeks. we won't be able to gather together at the same time let us take a decision this evening as this is the last class of this year let us take a decision we have been discussing it from chapter 1 to 18 and we are completing chapter 18 today and we are going to pray hallelujah dear parents if you have a concern about your children please pray for them hallelujah that they will not be conformed with this worldly pleasures or systems of this babylon but will know the will of god about their life and will lead a holy life in this wretched world hallelujah this is the right time to pray for your children pray for every families hallelujah so let us all close our eyes in the presence of god we are going to pray together this morning this evening that uh, i mean god's presence is in our midst hallelujah as we are concluding as we are concluding this study here as we are just i mean making a conclusion for the study of the book of revelation chapter 18 hallelujah thank you master let us all commit us to the mighty hand of god we have been studying about i mean what is babylon we have been studying about what is the system of the babylon what is the sins of the babylon and how the babylon was destroyed how the babylon was fallen because of the judgment of god in the old testament and how that is going to happen again during the time of the great tribulation remembering all those things let us submitting let's submit ourselves to the mighty hand of god let us pray this evening that the lord i need to be faithful in the presence of god the world and the worldly people are running after the worldly pleasures oh lord but lord this evening i am taking a decision as for my family and my children and my family members hallelujah and our church people will be standing firm in faith in the coming days hallelujah we will will follow the word of god i mean we should not be corrupted by the, with all these religious things and political things of this world but we must be faithfully standing firm i mean for, for, for the faith 
which we have in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let us all pray together this evening and let us submit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. It's just parents, just pray for your, your children. Hallelujah. God will fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit in the coming days. Hallelujah. I personally believe that. I mean, the Lord's Spirit will I mean, pour out upon our children in the coming days and they will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and they will worship the Lord in truth and spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. I know, I mean, only few members, only few families are attending in this Bible study. Hallelujah. This will be uploaded in the YouTube, no problem. But we are submitting the people, those who are attending in this Bible study. This is my, I mean, eager i mean i mean i mean uh, it's my it's my it's my i mean a desire that uh, every person those who are attending this prayer meeting in this bible study meeting be filled with the power of the holy spirit hallelujah because i mean we will not be able to i mean i mean overcome all this wretched world i mean without the power of the holy spirit hallelujah so let us pray for that let us pray for all the families. Let us pray for all our children, all the youngsters. Hallelujah. Let God's presence be upon every one of us. Hallelujah. In the coming days. Hallelujah. Let us bring everything in the mighty hand of God. 